Welcome to Championship Predictions. Are you listening carefully? We are recording this before West Brom have played Burnley, so we cannot tell you the scores from midweek. But the good news is, Sam, is that the scores are, are very bad, so I probably don't want to mention them, and we can just parlay the totals into the next show. So we are predicting the weekend round. Sam and I are locked in, actually, on West Brom Burnley. I've got 1-0 West Brom. Sam has got 0-0 nil, nil, and... Um, if either of us can get a correct scoreline in that one, then we are in for the win. But Sam, um, good morning. Welcome. Morning. Are you all set for round, <laughs> so confusing in these three game weeks, round 15 of championship fixtures? Yeah, mate. Things can only get better after the last um, couple of attempts from us. Um, I think I'm nailing Sunderland at the moment. No? That's double That's double um, outcomes for me, isn't it? Draws. That nil nil that was a good little, shout as well, and though. I think I got Swansea. Am I right in saying? I think I, I predicted Swansea to nick that one over Watford, so I was quite pleased to see that one come in. But um, yeah, need, tough. Need some score lines, don't we? Tough midweek for us, mate. I'm feeling a little bit, a um, little bit wounded this morning. <laughs> okay, well, wound us further in the comments. I'm sure you don't need any invitation to do that. Get your predictions in. Copy and paste from the description. Give yourself one point for a correct outcome. Three points for a correct score line. Give yourself four points if your correct scoreline has five or more goals. Sam, Friday night, um, you're going to be elsewhere doing um, Barnsley, I believe, but it's Watford versus Oxford. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, contrasting, aren't they? Watford home and away. Um, and Oxford with that, that brilliant win over Hull. So, yeah, I think... Probably low scoring, um, tight margins, and I'd probably just favour, you know, Watford here and Oxford to be competitive as they they have been, as we spoke about on the on the podcast. So I'd give Oxford a goal, but I'd probably just side caution with caution and go two one Watford in keeping with what's gone before. Yeah, so I agree with your premises that Watford are good at home and that Oxford are pretty much always in a game. So I'll probably take the draw then, um, Sam, for that reason. I'll give Oxford a point and I will go Watford 1, Oxford 1. And I'm looking very confused at Cardiff versus Blackburn, but I probably shouldn't be because you mentioned in the Championship Check-In podcast that Cardiff are pretty savage at home, aren't they? So I think I'm going to go for a Cardiff win. Um, Blackburn need the international break. They're struggling a little bit at the moment. I think they might be on for a zero point week, actually. Um, so sorry, Rovers fans, if I'm on, if I'm off on that. But if they are, I'm going to predict it to happen. I'll go Cardiff two, Blackburn one. Yeah, I, again, I was disappointed with Cardiff in an attacking sense. Um, yeah, they didn't really have anything on Kaminsky's goal other than a couple of speculative efforts. So I think there'll probably be that that confidence that they can go back to Cardiff and switch it on again, given how good they've been. Um, they've got a lot of players to return Cardiff as well. So, you know, they've got Ramsey to come back, Atete, Rolls, um, uh, Isaac Davis. They've got some good players to come back into the reckoning. So this might not be a flash in the pan. Um, however. However, oh. I think maybe their good form might run out of here. I'm not going to be bold enough to go for a Blackburn win, but I think Blackburn are just a good team at upsetting the odds mm. just when they look like they're they're um, in free fall. So I will go for a 1-1. One, one. I'll go for Blackburn to get a point. Um, you have such an advantage on this one. It's Middlesbrough v Luton. You've literally seen both sides in the last three days. Oh, it's tricky though. Isn't it? It's tricky because in the circumstances, I was probably as impressed with Luton as I was Middlesbrough, which is weird considering they won a grubby game 1-0 in a really flat atmosphere at Kenilworth Road, quite a, a tense atmosphere. And, and Middlesbrough as a, away fans would have been absolutely thrilled getting home at 2am or whatever it was, 3am on Wednesday morning. Um, oh, it's really difficult. I'm going to have to sit on the fence again because I'm not, convinced with that performance despite the the magnitude of it that Middlesbrough are going to be you know flying up that table and um, good enough to stay pace with your Sheffield Uniteds and and Leeds and anyone I've forgotten and I think Luton have turned that corner now I think that's 
what, four, five games they've been very competitive in. 2-2. Two, two. Which is annoying because I was planning to flip whatever scoreline you yeah. predicted and go the other way. So I can't flip a 2-2. Two, two. Um, oh, but it does feel like a draw, doesn't it? Oh, I can't. We, we're so draw heavy on this show already, Sam. I've got to back someone. I'll go with home advantage and I'll also play for a bonus point because I evidently haven't got Scooby. So I'm going to add one Middlesbrough goal onto what you predicted. So three, three, two. So I'm going to go Middlesbrough three, Luton two with very little logic um, in that decision. Stoke versus Millwall. This is the most simple, logical leap I can make. Stoke nil, Millwall won for the fifth time in a row. <laughs> Uh, I'm more than happy to take the nil-nil here. That's three <laughs> draws out of four for me here. Um, yeah, I could see Millwall maybe going up there and and putting on a defensive masterclass, masterclass. and maybe not finding the um, the opportunity at the other end. And yeah, maybe just frustrating Stoke, who we know, I think, in the final third, Manhoof and, and others, they got some game changers and they can they can produce things out of nothing, but We've seen. I mean, Mill. What? What? I mean, is it five goals conceded in the last nine or something? I, you know, the statistics are in, are incredible. Um, racking up the clean sheet. So yeah, I'll go for a nil nil. Seems. Sensible. I think. I think you're emboldened by calling that nil nil for QPR and Sunderland. You're you're oh, loving yeah, that yeah. as a tactic now. Maybe. I think I know what you're going to do on this one because Derby are very good at home and Plymouth aren't very good away. Derby versus Plymouth. Oh, I should have thought about this more intently because I fancy the draw here as well. <laughs> I fancy the draw here. Mate, um, do you remember a couple of weeks ago, there were five draws in seven games on a Tuesday night and it is a three-game week. So you are you mm. might not be barking up with people knackered at the end of international breaks mm. and just playing defensive for a draw. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to choose, you know, Argyle to break their away day who do here just because of what you said on Derby and they'll be obviously you know, relatively confident. I'm going to go for Derby to roll the sleeves up. Oh, I quite like nil-nil here and one nil and one-one, but I'm going to go for Derby to win by the solitary goal, one-nil. Yeah, I've got to back Derby as well. Um, you know, we'll, we'll issue a public apology to Plymouth if they go there and get the win because nothing is kind of in terms of the trends intimating they're going to do that. I quite like the one-nil. Um, I like the one-goal margin of victory. So I'll go two-one. Uh, to Derby, which would be a lovely, lovely old week for them with back-to-back wins. Um, <laughs> Leeds versus QPR, and Leeds, I think, are 20 places above QPR in the table. They're going to need a bounce back, aren't they, from losing at Millwall. I was going to say Leeds are very good at home, but, I mean, they're very good everywhere. That was their first away defeat um, against Millwall. So, look, it's fairly plain that I'm going to back Leeds. I'm suspecting you are too. I just wonder how heavy you're going to go on this one. So I'll go straight forward. QPR batten down the hatches, but still lose 2-0. Yeah, I was going to have 2-0. Um, I mean, it would not surprise me if we're sitting here, given what I saw in the week, next week, and they've lost four or five. It, it wouldn't. Um, I think a lot hinges on how quickly some players come back for QPR. That's obvious to me that they're missing some big players at the moment and it's only really fair that we truly judge the manager and his capability of turning their fortunes around when he's got a better 11 to, to field. I was going to have 2-0. I'll have 3-0. Sorry. Norwich versus Bristol City. I haven't watched this press conference. Damn it. Um, I don't know how won't have taken place yet, mate, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Much to the bare bones they are, Norwich. Um, and Bristol City, was that a first defeat in eight, I yep. think? Um, lots of draws in there, but, yeah, been incredibly competitive. Oh, it's difficult. I want to call another draw. 2-1 Bristol City. No, oh. no, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. This is the first time it's ever happened on the podcast, right? <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. Norwich haven't been beaten at home. Norwich haven't been beaten at home. I'm going another 1-1. <laughs> um, 
are we are we not up to your magic one year now where Norwich are like one year undefeated at at home? So they're I'm well going back. They're well past a year, aren't they? No, it was black. It was Blackburn at the start of November. Oh, wasn't was it, it? Start of November? I thought yeah. it was earlier than that. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going back Norwich, even though um, we we did we were um, made aware by a lot of Norwich fans in the comments. Ben, Sam, we haven't got any midfielders. We we do get that, but I just feel Norwich at home are going to win. And I was all set to flip your 2-1 Bristol City, which would have been a magnificent prediction. So apologies, um, Bristol City fans. I will take Norwich 2-1, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was your your 1-1. Yeah, there, quite like that now on reflection. I quite like that. You know, Norwich yeah, like a little bit makes... up against it, you yeah. know, diminished in numbers, but still got the quality and the, the home support to garner some points. Portsmouth versus Preston. I feel like I don't often predict a Portsmouth win and I want to do that today because I'm feeling good natured. Sorry, Preston fans. So I'm going to predict a Pompey, Pompey win in this one. Um and it might be a bit scuzzy and wintry. Pompey one, Preston nil. Yeah, I, I was thinking along the same lines. I mean, it, do I play tactically here and just flip it? Although I do think this could be Pompey um, getting their first win at home, I think it would be. Yeah, just the, the one other win at, was at QPR. QPR, wasn't it? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, let's flip it then. Love it. Nil one. Just for people who don't understand, some of these predictions, we're just trying to beat each other and it's nothing to do with the actual game and it's just kind of good fun. So people get very upset when we do the when we do the flips, but we're, we're clearly just bantering each other. And I still owe Sam dinner from him battering me last season anyway. Uh, Sunderland versus Coventry, Sam. Feels like goals. Was there a 4-4 a few years ago? Feels like four, there's four. some truth in what I've just said there. Uh, would would that have speak. been in League One? Could Connor of Chaplin have scored for Coventry? He could have because he used to play for Coventry. Keep talking and I'll bring the head to head. Yeah, up. yeah, please, please do, please do. I think there was a, a period where there was a bit of animosity maybe between the uh, the clubs. Uh, Mate, it's better than that. It was 5-4 five, four five, four. to Coventry. And I'm going to give you a round of applause here. The winning goal scored in the 78th minute by a player very close to my heart, Connor. Chaplin. Well, you, should, you should get a bonus point for that. What year was that? Um, oh, Christ. Hang on. Let me just zoom out. 2019. 13th of April, 2019. Mm. So five years ago. All right. So I think there'll be goals again, but I think the majority will be for the home side. It feels like a 3-2 to me. What the hell Love of it? 3-2, Sunderland. Um. So Sunderland have gone back to back nil nils. I think they'll look upon it as a decent week if they win this game, won't they? Um, so I'm going to go for the third clean sheet for Sunderland. I'm going to give them a win. I know I've been back in Sunderland a lot, but I still I'm still enjoying that great start to the season. So I'm going to go another one nil home win. Sunderland one, Coventry nil, and here we go. This is where we upset thousands of people in red and white, or thousands of people in blue and white. Because it is the first Steel City derby for five years, I think we established. Um, three nil nils in a row, though. Um, I know it's been a long while since, but this one feels tense. It feels tight. Sheffield United versus Sheffield Wednesday, if you hadn't figured that out. I'm going to do something I don't think I've ever done before. I'm going to have another one nil written down in a row to the home side on my pad here, Sam. I think it's a really tight game. I think it's going to be an absolute Hunger Games fight. And I think Sheffield United are going to win. And there's not going to be anything in the game whatsoever. Yeah. Don't want to call the fourth consecutive nil-nil. So I'm going to back the blades. Sorry, Wednesday fans. I will apologise if it goes the other way. Sheffield United won. Sheffield Wednesday nil. Bragging rights to the red and white half. I'm feeling like I've got a very low scoring week here at the moment. Um, but I've already oh, on, teased this from the... The podcast, yeah, low scoring, I think. I think it's 1-0 Sheffield United, or I think it's 1-1. So I'm going to go for the latter. Share of the spoils. Uh, share of the spoils, Sam. And um, Tim Volta could do with a share of the spoils in Hull versus West Brom. Yeah, we're talking about this ahead of West Brom and Burnley, right? So Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. You know how I like to get into the, my own mind and start predicting... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, assume your result. other prediction has gone correctly and that game ended nil-nil. I'll go for West Brom to win and Nick a 2-1. Right. So I will flip that then um, because it does feel like a low scoring West Brom win, but we like Hull for goals and you've taken the most obvious um, kind of iteration of that outcome. So I will go because I like Tim Volter and I want him to hang around a while in the championship. I'll go for him to get a much needed win and for it to be Hull 2, West Brom 1. Uh, it's Burnley Swansea. Again, to Sam's point, we don't know what Burnley have done, but I very much like the idea of a Swansea nine point week just for sheer fun. And if they're going to win, it's going to be low scoring. So I'm going to throw a bit of a curveball here and I'm going to go Burnley nil. You're already laughing. Swansea won. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Burnley get a point off West Brom. I think, what did I predict Swansea to do? Um, I can't think. Honestly. In midweek? Oh, I think you were correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think Burnley will win. I think Burnley will win relatively comfortably. Okay. I will go for a Burnley home 2-0 victory. There we go. Get involved in the comments. If you manage to wrap your head around the space-time continuum, we don't know the scores from last week because we don't know the result of Burnley uh, and their visit to West... Excuse me. And their visit to West Brom which is happening tonight as we are recording. Get involved, though, in the comments um, for the weekend's game. Copy and paste. And you know, the I don't need to give you the scores. You know how to do that. Um, Sam, it feels like our brains need a rest from football. So good to get this last predictions out of the way before two weeks without them. Yeah, definitely, mate. Yeah, it's um, it's been full on, hasn't it? Last little push. And then... Um... I'm sure stoppage time, isn't it? This stoppage time, and then I'm sure a few uh, players across the country off to Dubai, um, Christchurch, endorse it for me next week. For a couple of days. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll, I think I'll just stick in Bedfordshire. But yeah, let's hope for a stoppage time winner for me 